Testing, testing. Hey, can everyone hear me? Oh, where's my screen? Testing, hey, hey. You can see you guys streaming in. Let me just enable the chat. Okay, hey, Francisco, nice to see you. Right, all right, guys. Nice to see you guys uh, coming in. All right, so I'm going to send a message now. See if you guys can see the message, right? Basically, um, yeah, yeah. It's, um, there's this nice little chat box which you guys can send your message in, right? It allow me to, um, you can see each other's messages, which is a nice thing, right? And it actually help you guys um, keep in sync with the questions that you guys are asking, all right? So if you can, right, you can actually change. There's this little drop down that says host and panelists, right? You can actually change it to everyone, so everyone will be able to see your messages. Right, but yeah, it's uh, nice to see a whole bunch of you guys streaming in. Yamilu, nice to see you here too. <laughs> right, I see a couple of familiar names. Right, yeah, yeah. Have a great, have a great week, everyone. I see a couple of familiar names. Right, uh, nice to see you, Eduardo, Justice. Right, uh, we got Fatima. Um, yeah, seeing a couple of familiar names over here. Right, um, who is here for the first time? Do we have anyone here for the first time? First time, Claudia. Claudia, all right, all right. I'm just curious, right? I'm just curious. Where are you guys tuning in from? Uh, which country are you guys tuning in from? Right, if you don't mind sharing with me. Okay, a couple of people from Sri Lanka, Tanzania, Maldives, Maldives, sorry. Oh, cool, a couple of people from Maldives. Philippines, Nigeria, Portugal, okay. Should be glad. I think Portugal won a match yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thailand, Nepal, Turkey, Bangladesh, wow. Everywhere, everywhere. Oh, we got Sri Lanka, got Bangladesh, Philippines. Can you guys guess um, which country uh, I'm hosting this webinar from? <laughs> Can you guys guess which country I'm hosting this webinar from? Okay, USA, nice. <laughs> Couple of you guys seem to know. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, seems like quite a number of you guys know Singapore. Jin, oh. Jin Ang sounds familiar. Is Jin Ang? No. no. Jin Ang, are you also from Singapore? No, no. But he came many times actually. Really? Suspicious. <laughs> but it's not this Jin. Uh, not this Jin. Uh. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, but All right. Okay, okay. Oh, Yamila, oh, yeah, from Singapore. That's right. Okay, okay. Fantastic, fantastic, right? For those of you guys who are here for the first time, I will give you guys a quick crash course on the things that you need to look at, right? So um, first and foremost, first and foremost, if you're here for the first time, thank you for joining us for part of our masterclass series, okay? Um, it is really um, a partnership that we have with Take Mill to kind of take your trading to the next level, all right? Let me just point you in the correct direction. First things first, webinar, okay? Webinar. Um, okay, not webinar. You can go to YouTube. I'm going to give you the link to the playlist, right? The Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. I'm going to send this to you guys over here. Okay. Now, this is a great masterclass for you to go through. It covers a lot uh, of the different webinars that we're doing, right? Sometimes you, you hear us refer to different kind of terminologies, right? Uh, pullback overlaps, trend lines. Right, we got um, stop loss take profit placements. Right, we got uh, price action. We got Fibonacci. A lot of, um, a lot of that kind of stuff. Okay, now, if you were wondering on like uh, what does that refer to, you can actually tune into. Um, you can go to this playlist and you can watch the previous webinars. Right, it should prepare you well enough. Right, um, yeah, it should really really prepare you well enough to understand any of the terminologies that we're using. Yamilu, I can see you asking for pound dollar, but we're not going to take market requests today, right? Today, maybe if we have had time at the end of the webinar. Otherwise, today's webinar, we're going to talk about break even and partial profit placement, right? It's a little bit more advanced than just the st standard stop loss and take profit. So um, I will touch a little bit on that later. So yeah, if we do have time, you know, we can look at some, um, uh, some currency pairs, right? But for now, our first priority is to teach you guys break even and partial profit placements. Okay, now let's 
uh, let me just move on the web uh, to webinar real quick. All right, first things first, disclaimer, everything this webinar is educational in nature. So please do your own due diligence before you guys trade. All right, nothing in this webinar should be construed as investment or trading advice. Okay, I'm just going to take out my pen here and go explain something really simple. Okay, most of the time, most of the time, when people enter a trade, right? When people enter a trade, they, they mainly look at this thing called yeah, entry. They look at the entry. Okay, after they determine the entry, they pick a stop loss and they pick a take profit. Okay, they pick a stop loss, they pick a take profit. For most people, we just want to see what's wrong with MT. Do you think, um, Eduardo, are you asking MT as in meta trader? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, meta trader is fine, right? I think uh, there's a recent news that Apple um, removed the MT4 um, application from the Apple store, right? Um, but yeah, it's still fine, right? I think they released the news that you can still manage your positions, you can still use it, right? But um, the, the reason for that, I think it's something to do with the Russians and stuff. Right, but um, I believe you'll be sorted out sooner or rather later. Right, otherwise you can always switch to Android if you want to. Right, they have to empty for the web version. They have the desktop version, so you can still use those things. All right, Musonda. Right, I will teach you. Um, if you want to understand how to trade, right, first things first. Today's webinar will teach you a bit part of it. Um, secondly, right, go into the link I sent you earlier on the playlist. Go check it out. Right, Eduardo, are you using? Are you using TickMill by any chance? <laughs> Are you using TickMill? Um, and guys, um, all right. Then I have we, we, we can ch check it out. I believe the MT4 should still be working. There's no way that the MT4 desktop app is not working. Okay, because yeah, mine is still connected. So yours should still be connected. Do ping their support if you need do need help. I don't digress too much because we have a webinar on, uh, on break-even and partial profit placements today, which I do want to ensure that I cover, okay? Now, the thing about most trading strategies that people have is that they focus on the entry. After you do the entry, you know, then they consider the take profit, they consider a stop loss, right? So when we're looking at the anatomy of a trade, right, this is a series which um, Annabelle will be taking you through um, over the next few weeks. Now, over the next few weeks, is that it's not only an entry, stop loss, and take profit, right? You need to have contingency plans, meaning that you need, if this is your plan A, right? If this is your plan A, you need to know what's your plan B, right? And what is your plan C? Plan B comes in when you're looking at the things like break even. Plan C comes in when you're looking at the stuff like idea and validation. And even plan D might even come in if you're looking at stuff like trailing stop loss. All right. One thing I always want to let you guys know is that in trading, it's not only about profit maximization. Okay. It's not only about profit maximization, all right? And often overlooked um, ugly cousin of profit maximization is loss reduction, okay? A lot of the times people just think about, you know, maximizing their profits, right? But very, very few times, you know, they think about reducing their losses. There are two things they can really use uh, to reduce your losses, which is break-even and idea and validation. Why is the concept of, loss reduction so important, right? Um, it's because of this, right? So imagine, right, you have a trade, you plus 1%, you know, you take the trade, you 1%, you make a loss 1%, make another 1%, minus 1%, minus 1%, right? So on one side, you know, you can have one, two, one, two, one, zero. This could be 0%, okay? Even though you got three wins over here, you know, you got three wins, and you got three losses. Oh shit, my, uh, three wins and three losses. Okay, on the other side, if you know how to reduce your, um, protect your profits, right? Not only protect your profits, but also reduce the losses, number of times you lose. Not only if you have like plus one, plus one, if this, you can just have it such as a zero, right? It's just one trade, okay? You, uh, you alter the outcome of one trade, okay? Let me show you. You just alter the outcome of a single trade, which is this one over here. You have the exact same result. Two, three, two, one, right? And your profits over here. Wait, sorry. One, two, 
one, two, one, zero. This is negative, sorry, this is negative 1%, right? This is positive 1%. Just altering the outcome of one losing trade over here, a negative 1% allows you to have a 2%, a plus 2% difference in your, in, you know, plan A and plan B. This is the same, it's three wins, two losses, and one break even. Okay, one break even. Okay, I, I, I think, uh, I don't think we'll be sending a slide today, right, um, Kao? Rather, it will be uploaded on the YouTube channel, okay? I think it'll be uploaded towards the end of the week. Now, what I'm trying to focus on here is that even though, you know, looking at these two strategies, right, you got strategy A over here, you got strategy B over here, right? If you're able to just alter one trade, instead of it going to its full stop loss, right, you manage to get out at break even, Right, even though it's just one trade, your outcome, it, you know, one goes from negative one percent, the other, you know, the other outcome is one percent. You actually have a different, you have a difference of plus two percent. A lot of people just see it as one single trade, but they forget that for every one losing trade that you 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 suffer, you need one losing, you need one winning trade just to break even. Then one one more winning trade, you know, to make the additional one percent. Right. So knowing when to um knowing how to utilize the concept of break even is very important in our trading. Like I say, it's not only about profit maximization, going for a food, take profit or stop loss. It's about trying to reduce the number of losses you have. And that comes into the concept of break even. How do you then get partial profits? In the next week's webinar, we'll be talking about idea and validations, right? And then a future one, which is trailing TSL, trading stop loss. Okay, there's a lot more that goes into a trading strategy. Today's strategy, uh, today's webinar, we're going to talk about super important break even partial profits, right? If not master that properly, like I showed you in this example, it can really, really turn your trading around. Okay. Now, without further ado, I'll be introducing your host for today, right? Her name is Annabelle. She's part of the um, award winning research team here at Everest Fortune Group, right? We were the finalists for best effects and best equity research in 2019, 2020, and 2021. We usually have um, worked with um, the, <laughs> sorry, we usually work with other financial institutions on forecasting where the markets are heading, but we have a special partnership with Tick New where we are bringing guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the stuff that will take your trading to the next level. So don't hold back your questions for her. You know, um, this is a rather um, advanced trading concept, right? But it's the small little things like this, it's the advanced topics that help you really uh, take your trading to the next level. Because this topic in particular, right, like in the example I showed you, it's not only about making more money, it's about preventing losses. And this webinar will help you cover a lot of that pretty well. Okay? So without further ado, I'll be passing the time on now to Annabelle. Now after you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hi guys. Can you hear and see me clearly? Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, hi Jamilu. If you have any questions or um, any requests, do let me know in the comment section. Hi Musonda. Hi, good to see everyone. Um, might be your first time seeing me here, but I've posted the Tick News session a couple of times. Okay, so let us um, start the session today. We are talking about break-even and partial profit placement. It's a relatively simple topic to understand, but it's a concept that um, is a concept, is a good concept to learn and execute while you are trading, right? Okay, so the agenda for today, we'll be talking about the anatomy of trade, which Desmond has briefly covered. Hi, Eduardo. Okay, which... Uh, Desmond has briefly covered, so I will um, continue later on. A recap on take profit and stop loss. For those who haven't attended the previous session, we talked about the take profit and stop loss placement. right? If you want to check it out, do um, log on to our YouTube or onto the webpage to, to look at the previous past sessions that have been recorded and posted. Okay, what is break-even? The definition for those who doesn't know or um, are new to trading, break-even placement, partial profit placement, 
and then we'll move on to live chat where I will combine um, these all together from the first session, part one of four, take profit and stop loss. And then today's session, I'll combine these two and we'll go to live chats. So um, before I start, I just want to let you guys know why is stop loss, take profit and break even so important, right? People might be asking why, why do we need all this? Okay, so stop loss, take profit placement and break even are, are tools, okay, when, uh, like tools traders use that manage your trades more strategically, right? Instead of more whimsically or like um, based on your gut feelings. These are all strategic tools that we use, okay? So risk management, identify, analyze, accept or mitigate uncertainty means how to properly use this tool is helping you to identify more favorable uh, opportunities and acceptable levels of risk. So not only are you systematically protecting your holdings by prioritizing less risky trades, you are also preventing your portfolio from being blown up, right? So this is risk management. So these are tools to help you um, manage your trades more effectively. Okay, prevent emotional trading. So having um, stop loss, take profit, and even break even can prevent you from emotional trading. Meaning to say, you know, sometimes when you get greedy or you want to revenge trade, you often go out of or not think straight, right? So all these tools sort of like set boundaries, right? You have a boundary for all your positions. So it prevents you from over trading, revenge trading, or take trades that you do not want. Um, then lastly, we have the calculation of risk to reward. It's more to stop loss and take profit. So, you know, sometimes we need to, oops. Okay, so um, having all this uh, calculation of risk to reward, meaning to say it is important to know how much you are risking to how much you are being re rewarded. So you can't possibly risk $100 to get a $20 reward. It just doesn't make sense, right? So this out the reasons why it's important to have all these tools um, in place so you maximize, this is the key to trading, right? You maximize your profit and you minimize the losses. So trading is also a game of numbers, right? So break even, which is today's um, lesson or session will be important to understand. Okay. This one, just now Desmond has briefly covered. I'll just run through one more time. Okay, for entry, um, this is the whole anatomy of trade. But the reason why we list it up is because most people, they might be just looking at this. And the focus is always this, right? You spend a lot of time doing all your fit levels, all your stochastic, all your ichimoku, all the indicators. You do, you do 101 things just to find a good, entry level right and then you will put your after your entry then you will come to think about oh uh, maybe my risk to reward should be one is three so your take profit will be at three and then your stop loss at one that's the usual case for example okay and then this break even partial profit and trailing stop loss is often not thought about but it doesn't mean that they're not important. They are all as important as a whole. That's why we call this the anatomy of trade. These are all the assisting tools that one should know, right? In place to minimize all your losses or to, to safeguard your positions, right? Like I've mentioned, trading is a game of um, numbers, right? Okay, so today, this is the first session that we talk about. Today's session will be two or four, which is break even partial profit. And then three or four, we'll be talking about idea invalidation, where um, II is where you bring your take profit to your break even or to your entry level. Okay, this one we'll talk about it uh, when we get there. But today, let's focus on break-even and partial profit.
Okay, so uh, sorry, Eduardo is asking that works in a day trade strategy or swing trade, but I believe not in scalping, right? Uh, for scalping wise, I think your break even and partial profit, they all still work. It depends on what time frame you're, you're looking at. If you're scalping in a um, one minute or five minute, it might hit your stop loss real quick. But I believe if you're talking about 15 minutes and half an hour, it would still um, work. Yeah, because of the speed, correct. So usually our trading time frame is more than H1. So usually we are looking at H1, H4 um, and daily. Yeah. Okay, so a recap. Take profit and stop loss. For those who missed the previous session, I'll just run through this real quick. So take profit, stop loss. If you remember, stop loss is always beyond, which is above your resistance level. So there will always be resistance level. For example, your key support, your key resistance. All these levels are levels that you want to avoid, right? And these are called the magnetic zones, correct? Because prices tend to come here to test again. Okay, so you always want to avoid these areas when you're trading. Okay, this sets as a this sets as a magnetic zone or a no-go zone. So if you are looking at placing a stop loss, it's always beyond um, if you are looking at a short position. So it's depending on whether you're taking a short or a long position. So it's always after your resistance level. Okay. And then uh, let me just erase all this. Okay. And if you are looking at take profit, it's always before because you do not want a case where you know you fix your, for example, you fix your uh take profit to be exactly a hundred pips, okay, and you leave it there without moving. You don't want it to be a case where it comes to 80% and then it bounces off. Okay, and then you miss the whole trade itself because you set your um, take profit to be exactly 100 pips. So always remember, take profit before before the magnetic zone because you want to avoid any commotion or any um, resistance at this level. So just take a 90% okay, or 80%. Okay. Take profit is always before, stop loss always beyond. Avoid your major resistance level. So what is break even? Can anyone um, from the ground or from the floor tell me? Hi Narayan. Hi Narayan. So anyone on the oops. So what is break even? What is break even? So does break even mean? Let's say this is my entry. This is my take profit. This is my stop loss. Okay. For example, my price is coming up here, but it's coming back downward. Would you continue to hold the position, or would you, or would you um, cut your position here, or would you hold and wait for maybe price to reverse? Well, view the entry equals stop loss, okay? Not loss, not profit, correct? Okay, uh, those who have answered correct. So what is break even? Break even means you move your stop loss to your entry. So in this case, right, uh, I have some answers that says cut position, correct? So for example, okay, this might not be the best example. Let me draw, draw again. I'll draw a more obvious um, chart okay so entry here my take profit is here my stop loss is here rather okay so for example i en entered a trade and then price is going very well all the way up but suddenly it plunged this way there's like a 20 percent um, downward and my stop loss is here okay in most cases people who look at this right at this rate of drop most people will cut their position, correct? But 
you know, as traders, you always want your um, idea or your entry to be correct. So you'll keep holding and holding. But if you have the break even and partial profit um, tool in place or idea in place, you would actually hope that price will come back to this level here and you move your stop loss to your to your um, entry level. Okay. Okay, maybe I move on to some examples. Okay, break even definition is a point where your trade neither makes money nor loses money. Okay, um, just now someone mentioned, Ahmed, Ahmed mentioned, yeah, this is correct. Or the price you have entered the trading position, the level at which the risk on the trade is recovered. Okay, technically you have to put it slightly above because there is some um, spread or commission charges that you have been charged. So if you want an exact zero break even, then usually you should move like a couple pips up, depending on whether you're you are, um, shopping or buying. Okay, but anyway, okay, so based on this chart, um, okay, let me explain this chart first before I go into detail why um, break even is so important, right? So we are looking at this um, chart here. Prices are fluctuating, okay? Break even is a level when you're in profit. So you have to take note of this because for idea invalidation is the opposite. So for break even wise, um, we usually term it break even is because you are in profit already. Hence, you are moving your stop loss upward just in case anything happens or um, you know your, your trades goes in a reverse mode. Like what, what I have drawn just now. So for break even, usually you are already in profit. Just remember this. Break, for break even wise, usually you are in profit and you recognize that there's a risk of reversal. Okay. So it's basically you saying if I'm right, price should go all the way to my target. But if it's wrong, I should get out. Okay. It's a more conservative way, but it kind of protects your position. Okay. So prices came, came down, fluctuate. And then you thought, hey, maybe this is a good level to trade if that there is a breakout. So let's play, place a, a position here. So this is my entry, yeah? Okay, entry. And then your break-even point, how do you know where, where you should um, place your break-even trigger? Okay, you should know. So you have a break you have a break-even point, which is at your entry. This is very straightforward. But when when do you know if you should be worried or when you should take note of a, um, a modified stop loss. Okay, so this is the level here, which is a resistance. It's usually a resistance level or a previous high or a previous support or resistance that you set your trigger. So for example, everyone knows that um, for break even, it means moving your stop loss back to your entry. Yes, that is correct. But when exactly do you have to take note of a trend reversal or a trade reversal? You know, when exactly should I be um, placing my break-even trigger? This is when you take notice of your position like, hey, you know, my, my prices are actually going in reverse instead of going in the direction that I want. So a break-even trigger is often placed on a um swing high a resistance level a support level a key resistance area basically a magnetic zone okay so take note there is your break even point let me write it down okay there is a break even point and then there is also your break even trigger correct and often and also remember that break even happens when you are in profit so if you are in in loss right it's it's not if prices actually come here already there's no there's no break even because you're in loss so in this case my entry level is here and then price hey you know it's moving in the direction that i want but it's fluctuating hence i'll be thinking in my head 
hey, um, is this trade actually, you know, correct? But I'm already in the trade, so I'll be worried. And then when it comes to this level, I will set my trigger because this is a major resistance level or a key resistance level. I will trigger it here. If price actually reverses, then yeah, I will move my stop loss up to my entry level. But if it continues this way, right, then I wouldn't um, move my stop loss. But if you do want to be conservative or if you want to try out a break even, then yes, you can actually place your break even even further at your, at your entry or further up. It's possible. Okay, but uh, for today's case, if we're talking about break even, break even, then yes, it's just to move to your um, entry level. Okay. Let me just read uh, some of the comments or questions. When the trend is solid and have at least 1% profit, move stop loss to entry. Yes, correct. You can do that. Yes. Some people actually do that. Okay. Um, okay. So point one is your break even point and point two is your trigger. Your trigger should be somewhere where there is a resistance. Okay. So that's why there is a trigger. If my position goes unfavorably, then I would move my stop loss um, to my <clears throat> to my entry level but if it's favorable you can choose to or not to move your um, stop loss right so it's often a case when you're in profit and you recognize that there might be a risk of reversal so it's like kind of ranging and I'm slightly afraid or I want to be more conservative so I move my stop loss to my entry point okay so in this case you know hey it's correct so um, the prices actually came down, went up slightly and all the way down to my um, break even. So instead of losing at my stop loss, the full potential here, I actually got up at my break even. So this is how you protect your positions. Right? Unless your trade is very solid, like it's going, maybe retraces slightly and goes all the way up, then yeah, you, you might not um, have the need to place your break even. So it's also up to your um, risk appetite at the same time. Okay. Okay. And now let's take a look at some examples here. So we have our entry, which is here. Looking at a tick profit, and I have my stop loss placed here. So entry, tick profit, stop loss. Okay. So this, this is a bit confusing. Why is the password? We haven't thought about partial profit. Uh, let me go to... Okay, so there is break even. Sorry, I missed out the um, partial profit slides. I don't know where you went. Okay, so partial profit, let me just draw it out. So partial profit means um, instead of having a full 100%, maybe at this point in time, you can draw out partial profit. So it's as simple as that. So instead of... Um, having your full position running to your 100% take profit, you could actually take uh, maybe 20% off at this level here if you feel that you know you, you want to pocket or you want to get some rewards off the table. Okay. So in this case, our entry is here. Partial profit is here, maybe at a 30%. And then my full take profit is at this level. Okay. So prices actually came to here, which is a resistance level at my 38.2% retracement, as well as my previous, um, as well as my overlap resistance. Okay, I took some profits off the table here. Give me one second. Okay, so in case, um, after I took my profit here, right? <clears throat> To protect my position, since I am already in profit, correct? I'm already in profit since my entry is here. My entry is here. I'm already in profit. I would prefer in a more conservative manner to move my stop loss to my entry, correct? So I move my stop loss to my entry level. So this is my break even. So if price ever reverse, 
I will not lose any cent. And, but instead, I actually took some profit already. All right. Okay. Okay, let's go. Let's move on to um some live chat. I will I will guide you guys on how um to take profit and stop loss placement to do this placement, which is our one of four webinar session, and then today's session on break even and uh partial profit. Okay, this is two or four. Okay, let's go. Yeah, let me just load my chart. Okay, if you guys have any questions, do let me know. Um, it's a relatively easy and simple topic to understand, but it's more of the um, concept and the psychology that you have to understand and execute it or even use it. You know, some people don't even, um, actually for myself, I really use a break even as well, but it's a good habit to have um, in, in volatile um, circumstances or situation like now. Okay, have you all seen that? You know, GBP USD is 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 at its all time low. Okay, but let's take a look at uh USD. Oops, USD Swiss franc. Okay, this might be a good example for you guys. Okay, let me just do um some drawings and then I will got you guys along. Okay, for example. Okay. Okay, for example. My buy entry. I'm looking at prices to go all the way here to my... Is there a previous thing here? Okay. My take profit is this. Uh, this is just for an example to um, let you guys understand um, the session, the previous session and today's session, how you actually use it on live charts. Uh, yes, this is a four-hour chart. Usually we use four-hour. I can zoom into one hour, but um, we stick to the four-hour first and then I'll zoom in later. Okay, and my stop loss, maybe I will put it here. Okay, no, this too much. So for example, okay, let me just chart it first. Okay, so for example, right? Okay, let's start with our um let's start with our take profit and stop loss first. Okay. So let's say I have a breakout buy entry at this level here. Okay, which already did. Let's say it haven't happened yet. Okay. Let's say it's it's maybe at this level, which I was looking at actually. <laughs> okay, so at this level, okay, before the breakout. For the ratio wise, Eduardo is up to you, but um yes, it's somewhat a one to two if I'm correct. Okay, not even. Yeah. One to four. Okay, but you can do a one to two. Okay. But this is just for example uh purposes. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be one to two. I just want to show you guys um, how to use correctly your take profit, stop loss, as well as your break even and partial profit. Okay, so let's start with a buy entry. So I'm looking for a breakout buy entry here because of many levels. Okay, and um, you know, USD Swiss franc is on a rise because you know USD has been strengthening uh, due to the rate hikes. Okay, um, so buy entry here and my take profit is here. So my 127.2 extension and my 100% projection, Fibonacci projection is right here. Should my take profit be exactly at this level or should I bring my take profit further up? Okay, this is A, this is B, 
and uh, C is to take below. So should I take profit exactly at my 127.2 extension, 100% projection level, or should I move higher to take more profit, or should I move lower to take profit here? Let me know in the comments, A, B, or C. We have some answers. Some say A. Okay, C is actually the correct answer. Claudio, lower because we need partials. What do you mean by partials? Okay, the correct answer is C. Okay, the reason being, um, remember when I said, when I did a recap on the um, take profit and stop loss placement, you always let me type it out, it might be easier. I will use TP and SL. Take profit before. Loss. Right? It's quite easy to memorize this. Okay, so depending on whether you're taking a long or short position, okay, take profit before and stop loss is always beyond. The reason being, you don't want to be um, drawn into the commotion zone, right? Why is this so small? <laughs> okay, let me draw it bigger. Okay, this is much better. Okay, I will put it here. Take profit before stop loss beyond. Take profit before the reason being you don't want price to actually um, come all the way up here and reverse. And then you just miss the whole thing. Okay, people usually avoid the magnetic zones. So, Take profit before your commotion starts or before all the fight happens here. Okay. And then you want a stop loss. So stop loss, let's say if my stop loss is here at my, let me see, okay, whether there are any levels. Okay. So stop loss, this is exactly my 23.6%. This is also my previous swing low. So if you want to put a stop loss, Put slightly below because you know that prices will tend to come to this area. If your stop loss is placed exactly at this level, your price might actually come down to test this level again before it flies up, right? And often than not, most of the time, this is what happens to us, right? You hit your stop loss and then your price goes all the way up to where exactly you have uh, projected it to be, okay? So always put stop loss beyond give it some space for buffer, right? You, you don't want to be exactly at where the price will test it, you know? Especially when you know that this is the resistance zone that price will come in, come back to test again. So give them, uh, give it some breathing space. So if price actually come back to test this level here, there's, there's, a, there's some space, it wouldn't stop you up from this position, okay? Okay, so I have done my um, take profit and stop loss. Now we will talk about your partial profit and your break even. So for example, I'll put it as simply as possible for you guys. Okay, so for example, if we are talking about your partial profit, partial profit is very easy to understand because it's when um, prices actually comes to this level and you feel like hey you want to um take some profits off the table you want to be profitable i guess it comes hand in hand right okay uh sorry jim i don't understand how you decided to take profit level you mean this take profit level okay so partial profit i'll just type I would just type it out. So partial profit. Partial profit, in my opinion, it comes in hand in hand with your um with your break even because you know if for example you come here and then you take a partial profit, but if it goes back all the way down to your stop loss, right? You would have lost your 
they will have lost everything. So it doesn't make sense. The only way it makes sense for partial profit is if you move your stop loss to your break even and you take a partial profit here. So in case if prices reversal all goes in the opposite direction to hit your break even or your stop loss, okay, you would you wouldn't be um, in losses, correct? So break partial profit and break even often comes in hand in hand. Okay, uh, I mean, why did you pick A and C in the PT? Oh, it's a random. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. As in that, that, um, that A and C that I drew here was just to show you guys that, you know, take profit should always be before. So it was option A, B, and C. It's not, it's not a level that I picked. It was a, it's just to show you guys that you should always take profit before. Yeah. Okay. So partial profit means I think it could be a percentage. Percentage or number of pips or whatever you deem it is. Okay. Or it could be a, another level that you see. Um, for example, maybe. There's another um, level here that you want to avoid. For example, a swing high. Okay, maybe price came here this way. Maybe price actually uh, like this way. And then, you know, okay, ignore this. Take this as price now. Okay. And then continues, for example. So when price comes here, I know that I have a level to watch out for, which is this level. So I would prefer to take partial profit off at least a 50% just in case, you know, price reacts off this area, okay? Although my confluence tell me that, you know, this should be the level that price should be testing. But hey, you know, this is another magnetic level that I'm looking at. So actually, technically, this should be your um, break-even trigger as well, okay? And you could take partial profit here. So for example... I take partial profit here. I will move my stop loss to my um to my entry level because if price actually comes back down, I wouldn't be losing any money. Okay. But if I leave my stop loss here while I take a uh profit here, right? If price comes all the way down, I will still be losing money. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So if you want to um take a partial profit, I would recommend that you move your stop loss upwards okay okay so let me finish typing okay okay and usually hand in hand with my break even because you do not want to lose out you do not want to lose that sum of money when if price actually reverses to, your, to hit your stop loss okay so um, break even, I'll just use B, break even is often when you're in profit already, then we can consider it as break even, all right? In profit, usually in profit already. And it means that you move your stop loss to entry level. So what I mean by that is, let me just clear this. Should I clear the chart? Okay, forget it. Give me one second. My buy entry and then my projection. I'll just do a quick one. Okay, for example. Okay, so for example, just now I've mentioned um should I have done it? Because I need this. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I just needed to clear the chat for you guys to be able to see. Okay. Um, so often your break even is when you are in profit, for example. Okay, so for example, if we already had a, if we have, we have entered already, right, 
at this level, my buy entry, I will be already in profit. So this is the point where you can decide whether you want to take a partial profit and move your stop loss to your entry level. So you could potentially take partial profit off here, but I do not see any key resistance uh, levels around this level, around this area, or um, there's no fit levels whatsoever. Okay, that says that, you know, hey, you should be worried about. Let's see. Okay, yeah, there are no levels or confluences that tell me that there might be a resistance. So I might not take my um, partial profit here, but I will definitely move my um, stop loss up to break even because this is quite a substantial um, move already, for example. Okay, so if we leave the position as it is, it might come to this level to take profit or it might reverse, correct? So if it reverses, you you know that, you know, hey, um, I would not be in any losses because I, I'm already in, um, I've already moved my stop loss to my, um, to my entry level, okay? So this is the example that I will give, leave you guys with. Um, give me one second while I read some of the questions. If you know sorry, if you know your price to come back to the initial entry, why didn't you set it as a pending buy region? Which which um which level are you talking about? Please can we get the recorded version of this class? Okay, this this session is recorded as as with all our previous sessions. So if you want to take a look at um if you miss any part of it and you want to refresh your course, you can actually log on to the YouTube um channel um or take new web page okay the level you set at, set at stop loss okay wait give me one second I'm, i'll draw it down yeah this will you are asking why i don't put my uh buy entry here is that the question how can you calculate correctly stop loss Okay, the reason why I don't set my uh, buy position here is because price has moved up exponentially and my chances of, um, and I'm looking at a breakout buy entry here instead of a uh, buy, buy level here because there's no um, confluence or there are no levels that I'm looking at. It's just a, um, a previous swing low. So at this level, I'm looking at a breakout, a 78.6 projection and probably a Fibonacci retracement level. So I'm trading on the basis of a breakout. And of course, my fundamental news. So if prices actually break out here, I'm looking for a buy. So there are many reasons for me to buy here if it breaks this level. Hence, I will not actually wait for price to come down because you will have missed the boat. So it's depending on what style of trading you're actually looking at. Break even not only prevents losing trade but also winning trades in some cases. Doesn't no, it doesn't make a uh, break even redundant because, like I've mentioned before, trade uh, trading is a game is a game of 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 numbers, right? So the more you play, it's like it's like root. Okay, maybe not root. Really. Break even actually yes, it does prevent losing, but also also winning trade in some cases it does prevent that but i would think that um if you have a good it, so at the front part when when desmond mentioned like if you have um for example 10 trades okay and you have four winning trades or five winning trades okay and then you have uh some break even trades you are still on a winning instead of having maybe six um, lo lo losing trades. You get what I mean? It's a game of numbers. How, how can you calculate correctly your stop loss? 
it's depending on how you how much you want to risk based on your um based on how much you have or how much you're willing to lose. At the current level, isn't it a breakout that you tested now support? Uh yes, it can come back, it can come back down to my buy entry to test. That's why if you are more conservative, you could put you could put your stop loss to your buy entry to make it a break even, or you could take partial profit here. Hence to this session about partial profit and break even. Eduardo, yes, bro, it's about probability, correct. I just couldn't think about that word. Yeah, it's a game of probability, right? So if you have more winning trades or more break-even trades rather than having more losing trades, technically you are still winning in the long run. Can you move your TP up after moving stop loss? Can you move your TP up after moving stop loss to entry level? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But um, there must be enough reasons for you to actually move it up instead of um sticking to your original. In completing the stop loss, can you use the Can we use the ASRN daily? Do you want um, um for Raymond? Um, what do you mean by SRN daily? If you are, how do you calculate priority to take profit? It's for my case, I would put my take profit, my stop loss, all that levels based on confluence zone. So profit can be based on a um a percentage of how much you want to earn or um, by setting some confluence zone. Confluence zone meaning the levels at which um, you know most of my fit levels or most of my fit levels actually come together. So this is a zone where magnetic zone where my price might actually retest. So I'll, I'll put that level there and take profit slightly below. Or you can use your support. The most basic will be your support and resistance level. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, guys. I have to end the session today. Um, just remember this area. I'll leave you guys with this because I have another session to attend. If you do have any questions, um, I will be back in the next session to talk about idea invalidation and we can do a recap on this. And I will revisit the questions that you guys have for me. Okay. So I'll leave you guys with um, this. I will see you guys the next session. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Okay, thank you.